Alright, greetings family, we're live at our Revolution Camp. This is Bomani Tamba here, here with my two good brother, Kofi Bruce and my brother uh, Derek. And um, both brothers have journeyed with me to the African continent, uh, Ghana specifically, and we have had a wonderful experience on our journeys to Ghana. Um, both of them came there two separate times with me, but I wanted to talk with them about what they felt as far as the nightlife and felt as far as uh, connected and networking with sisters there in Ghana. And I think want to tell the difference, that's up to them. Um, hopefully they don't say too many things that I get thrown under the bus. Uh, regarding uh, my brother, uh, Kofi Musa, what was the experience with connecting with sisters uh, in Ghana? Um, I had a very good experience connecting with uh, lots of uh, females over in Ghana. You know, uh, most of the time... I'm not saying that you're a playboy, I think. Oh, no, some no, of these, no, are, no, some no. Of these are like uh, introductions. Yeah, yeah, not, not even that way. Like, yeah, not even, maybe not one, even, one or two dates. Not, not even, you know, in that way. You know, most of the time, they don't approach the man, you know, they sit back and they want the man to approach them, you know, because that's how their culture is, most of the time. But, you know, from my experience, like, just once you start taking, talking to them, you know, and they hear your little accent, then it's like a, a light bulb will go on. You can see their eyes light up, you know. First, first I wasn't really sure the reason why, but um, they just like, I don't know, maybe it's just for something different, you know what I'm saying? Like when we go over there, it's like we are the foreigner, you know, with our accents and everything. You know how some people here in America, they attract their, like foreigners because it's just not the same old thing as, as what's going on all the time. So, but I have good experiences. <laughs> That's perfect. I'm going to get a brief introduction of uh, my brother, Derek. Experience? My experience was, uh, was great. You've been here twice, so you know, it was different the first and the second time. Yes, yes. I, I, well, the first time I went, I was not. Uh, used to uh, like such feminine women when I when I've never met a real feminine women like that or a group or a culture of feminine women that's that day to day uh, routine that's part of their whole ma uh, uh, makeup mental makeup and everything so that to me was new it was uh, I've never seen a black woman feminine because in America they're more you know in this aggressive society right. it became a little bit more right. masculine and, and, and more competitive, mm -hmm. so there was like she was feminine in all aspects. So right. that was new, that was different, you know. And then the second time, I actually went out and uh, met a, a nice person that actually came to one of our meetings. And we went out on a good little uh, one 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 uh, one day one night date, and that was uh, that was fantastic, you know. And she was so very. When's the, nice. when's the wedding? When is the wedding? You gotta invite me, man. I so we plan something for you. <laughs> actually, um, I, I, I saw her on a video. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. okay. <laughs> yeah. So she was sweet. We still yeah. communicate uh, to this day oh, uh, through WhatsApp and uh, social media. And uh, so I look forward to seeing that you know, center when I go back because she's a nice person, just well, uh, well, well, nice and well around. So you didn't meet any wifey material since you've been here yeah, for 35 years she, in America? She, oh, here in America? Yeah, you've been here for 35 years. So, no. especially in this Atlanta, we have some of the most beautiful, fine, incredible, intelligent women here that has a lot going for themselves. No, you, what you have in America, what you have in Atlanta is quantity. You have a lot of quantity, a lot of women everywhere. Quantity, but the quality is on a low percentage basis. Mm -hmm. well, I say again. High amount of quantity, but a low amount of quality. Which what would you rather have? What does a when a company produces a product, Nike, they want quality, quality. versus quantity. But then when they step up the game, they can do both quality uh, and quality. Well, you talk about quality. What are you basing your quality? Are you basing your quality based on cultural values or basing your quality based on finances, money, economics, uh, and status? I would say cultural values. You know, and yeah, and yeah, for me. Here in, in America, and especially in Atlanta, like when a female looks at a man, they looks at him as what they can do for me. But over in Ghana, when they look at a man, it's like, what can we build together and do for us? That's the quality over the quantity. So that's that's the difference to me from, from my experience. Excellent. Uh, our brother uh, Sakari has a point you want to drop in. Oh, I just had a question. Uh, here in America, I have three daughters, and I wanted to know, from your understanding of being around, I don't know how much of the United States you have traveled, but would y'all say black women are being reared more for, like, say, independence and, and work, and not fulfilling all dynamics of being a woman, being a 
sometimes they're offended by submissive or... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think so. Because, you know, here in America, it's work, 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 work. Get yours, get yours, get yours. It's not about building a family and what we could grow together. So, yeah, I, I, I think that it is a big difference. Or, or like I like to say, uh, some women want to be the alpha female mm -hmm. and you be the beta male. Right. <laughs> you do what I say <laughs> when I say do it. And that's if you funny. don't that's, act that's outside so that's funny. my laws, what I said for you, then you're wrong. Yeah. yeah. And that, that causes like a lot of static because now, especially now in 2017, black men in America, we don't know how, not me personally, but black men in America don't know how to perform their duties as men because we don't know our role. Like we really lost. And black women are really lost. But they being geared towards being a controller of the black family. And, and a lot of times, it's not even because black men ran out. You know, a lot of parameters went into us getting into this position that we're in now. And only we could get ourselves out of it, together. Together, not apart. Black men, black women, black children, black people. Black family. Black family. And when you don't, when, when he mentioned, um, when you don't have her playing that certain position that a woman's supposed to play those traits, let's say for instance, one of the, effects, uh, one of the traits that you'll find and uh, women in, in Africa, it's uh, uh, a woman being affectionate. Affection and showing affection goes a long way. Mm -hmm. Affection to your man goes so far, or your group of men having that affection because men need that by nature. They have that from their mother. When he's sick, his mother's there to be affectionate to take care of. When he's adult, if a man is not shown affection, then he's prone to get violent right. because that's something he needs to calm him down and balance him out. So being that black women are not around um, and giving that affection to black men as a whole, as a culture, it takes a toll. And they mm -hmm. react in different ways. Violence, uh, joining gangs, drugs, dealing. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that goes into uh, holding her accountable for it, lacking to give that type of affection overall. And, and, and even to me, like in America, when, when it seems like a, a black woman finds a good black man, it's like in the back of her mind, she's waiting for him to make a mistake. Wow. You know, it's, in, instead of like, let's grow in together, which is what I'm all about. It's like, okay, he's good, 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 good. But in the back of her mind, she's waiting for him to mess up because she's trained that way. Well, Brother Safari, I would like to say, uh, simultaneously, slavery still affected both of us, the black woman and the black man. So. Uh, She's not ultimately guilty mm -hmm. for her ways and action. Oh yeah, and neither, to, neither are black men. You know, but the fact that we got opportunity to try to come out of that darkness, and we don't, you know, so that causes the major friction. Whereas uh, we allow things like capitalism to be that major thing. Uh, a woman can ask you how much you make, and that could be a horror show. Right. Uh, because, you know, your worth is not your work. Right. You know, uh, and uh, what you bring to the table doesn't necessarily mean your uh, W-2 finances. Right. You know? yeah, exactly. But some people go that route. Uh, <clears throat> so, sisters here, unfortunately, seem to be under that blanket of uh, uh, the psychological effects mm -hmm. or post-traumatic stress syndrome through, through the past. And like you said, waiting on that uh, time bomb, you're going to do something. Right. Coming late, you had to be uh, doing something with some other woman or something to that effect. You know what I hear? I hear like when a black woman say, oh, I have a good man, the next word out of her mouth is what he has. Oh, he has such and such, such and such. She don't say, oh, he does such and such, such and such. Or he is. Right. So do you think that black men are more they acknowledge the fact that they've been oppressed uh, uh, and targeted and and know the effects of what slavery had on them versus the black woman in America is in denial and run from it or, or does it acknowledge that part? I, I think black people in general, as far as slavery goes, we have a, a complete lack of understanding and comprehension of everything that happened uh, back in slavery because we're not taught it. And it's always hidden, and it's always like hush, 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 hush. And especially like with the black male-female relationships. During slavery, they used to take the, uh, you know, have sex farms for the women. 
and then they would take the black man and stud him out to different places. Sometimes even with his own mother and sister. And a lot of people don't even know that. So yeah. people always say, don't talk about slavery, don't talk about slavery. I think we need to talk about slavery because everything that happened that was put in place back then, we being affected by it right now through all the topics that we've been talking on, everything, black male, female relationships, you know, finances, business, like everything. So it all goes in, to me, it all goes back into that because I, I study the past, you know, I trying to find the truth as much as I can. And there's a lot of horrible things that took place to get us into the mind state that we're in. But you have to, when you when you do when you in that process of you doing that, that also is considered uh, scientifically and sociologically. So it's, uh, what do you call it? Psychologically. psychologically, that's a healing mechanism. Mm -hmm. When you do that, you're going back to the past, finding and correcting that. You're healing yourself. Right. So in order to go forward in this world in this time, based on our experience. You have to heal, right? And that's the healing process, right? So if you do that, you're doing yourself a great due diligence and a great favor in going forward for yourself and your family. I would agree with uh, brother Derek. Uh, I'm also going to say that uh, I've met a lot of sisters who have uh, certain type of degrees, bachelors, masters, and PhDs, but there's one word that seems to get by them. And that word is reconcile. A lot of sisters don't want to reconcile with brothers. Mm -hmm. We're going to have little, we're going to have hiccups in relationships. Right. We're going to have little differences, right. especially in this society where dating is a lot different than our cultural system, mm -hmm. our cultural norms. Um, we come from a system where our parents used to kind of pre-arrange some setups. You know, as teenagers, we would kind of know that parent over can there. I, can I ask a question on that before you move on to something else? Sure. Would you trust your mother of to pick your mate? Of course. And that's what us as black people need to get back to. That all go back to the family structure. Because now, most people, they don't pick their mate on what they need, what they actually need. They pick their mate on other circumstances. Ooh, girl, look at his eyes. Right. And then it's always going to be a conflict. A conflict will always come up because your needs are not being fulfilled because you didn't pick your mate based on your needs. And then you be putting them in child support because you didn't need that man from the beginning. Yeah. He's he not the one for you. So what about his eyes? Yeah. His you know? eyes, his hair. Uh, he's driving a 2017. So perfect, perfect analysis, uh, gentlemen. What I want to add into that is um, so, so do sometimes uh, women in this country, because um, I guess we have to give up. Or do our women sometimes in general pick out of the options of men that approach them and connect with them, they pick the wrong guys? Um, yeah, they, they, it's not enough research, and that's one of the things I was going to say. Uh, like on dating sites here in America, one of the first things I ask is, are you Afrocentric? You know, I want to know what type of studying and time have you put into knowing yourself and knowing your father, your mother, right. you know, not just knowing them as they're related to me, what is the black man to you? You right. know, is he just, you know, just another black man? I can find him anywhere, you know, or is he very important to you? You know, is he that first guy on this planet that, that led the way for you? You know, uh, do you trust him unequivocally? Right. You know, is he the head of the household? You know, is, you know those are the type of questions I want to know. I don't want to know uh, who got the uh, best shrimp and pasta in town and, and uh, Kenny. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dayton more. He got 22s like, on his job. Dayton now is more glorified out, you know, where you know, you're spending money at big restaurants and everything is about uh, spending money mm -hmm. and about uh, glamorizing. You go to the club nowadays, it's like everybody all dressed up. You have some folks who don't have this and that, but the way they, you know, they dress, you might think that they have certain things. That is um, the worst place to date. Right. And find a mate is the club. Right. That is the worst right. place. Yeah, Let me say that again. That is the worst place to find a mate. The club. So what about church then? If the club is that bad? If you're religion and you can find somebody in your religion, that's a step closer in the right direction, but you still need time. Absolutely. You need to reconcile your difference. Mm -hmm. You need to know a lot of people rush into stuff on this relationship too. And, and they, they don't 
hardly know the man, they don't hardly know the woman. And they hardly know they sell. I mean, people yeah. are getting together having sex and then children be made from the people that's getting together just randomly. That has something to and do then, with morals. And then, you know, then to the point where you have children being ruled by, you know, uh, dysfunctional families. And that's why I go back to the fact that fam, we have to build this repatriation village in Ghana and, and, and head back to our roots <laughs> and learn to do more things in our roots and culture. And brothers and sisters, if you're looking for a good mate, are looking for a good connection to for someone to marry into. One of the things that we talked about, and based on our research I started doing in 2004 when I started traveling to the African continent to find out about uh, how family structure work in the homes. Uh, and, you know, it was incredible, you know, what I uh, realized. Um, the fact that families work like traditional families. We used to hear about the family structure in the South. And I mean, I'm here in the South and it's not what I used to hear. I'm not like what I you know, heard about that. Dirk is here from the South and you know, he's explained how things have changed. But our family, what we have to really look at uh, is we have to start thinking about us marrying into culture. So black men here that's looking to build a family, you can build a family with a sister from African continent. Black women here that's looking for a family structure, you can build into a family on African continent. And I know some people make comments like, oh, you gotta go all the way far to Africa to find a mate. It's nothing about that. Uh, people like, but it, it's also at the same time too, we're telling you that we need to start working on evacuating from America. So mm, think time. about, you know, if you're looking to leave in about two years, make sure that you don't have a, a, a bunch of children here to where you can't leave. Make sure that uh, you focus yourself, discipline yourself, and control yourself, especially for the men. I know sometimes brothers can go buck wild next time they have five children in one year. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. no? Get yourself organized, and uh, don't think you can come to the African continent and do that, because if so, we're going to get you. you know, we need brothers and sisters to come to be responsible to build into a family structure. What we do is collect, is combining our resources as African people on the globe to build a black nation. So family, uh, we talked about the, uh, the GoFundMe at the uh, uh, Repatriation Village in Ghana. And um, donate, connect, uh, also just reach out to us and let us uh, know what you think about uh, building communities in Africa and what you think about as far as this, us fixing our issues with these relationships in, in America. Cause all the bad relationships that all of us have leads to the white system being richer and richer and oppressing us and having more and more resources to keep us dysfunctional and keep us apart. And uh, in closing, what I want to do is just get some final thoughts uh, from my brothers, right? My brother Derek and my brother uh, Kofi, as far as um, black male relationship, um, just from the. the, the uh, I, I, I just want to say that um, to me, the black woman is a black woman no matter where she is, whether she's in China, Philippines, Brazil, Africa, we one people. The difference is culture. That's the only difference to me, it's, it's culture. We raised an American culture with American set of values and rules and everything else. We're not operating in our own system. That's why we having a lot of conflict with each other. So uh, some of the guys that you know want to be more into their culture, they find it hard find that here in America, so they go to the source. But we still want people. It doesn't matter, you, you African in America, are you African on the continent, are you Africa in Cuba, or wherever you are, you're still African. That's all I want to say. I agree with you. Yeah. Appreciate it, brother. Uh, some final thoughts on relationships in, uh, in the black world, and what you recommend as far as us connecting to Africa? Uh, I believe that black men and black women in the West or in America, uh, can heal and create with the problems that are, uh, that are on the table at the moment. You know, if we try and we really want to do it, uh, you know, get that communication back and that bond back and that spiritual uh, realm, you know, back in our households and get out of this uh, wicked system. Even if you're going to stay here, you know, you don't have to live within the, the live uh, in the, by the ways of the society. Right. You can always uh, pull yourself and your family back from that. So I, I want to say just, you know, it can be done, black woman and black man. You know, black woman, come back, come back uh, to the black man in America, and uh, let's heal this world. And that way, we have black nations all over the planet, not just in Africa, but everywhere. We everywhere. Have strong black family. So, you know, come back and uh, come back home and, and, and work with us. You know, we've been away for so long, and uh, there's a lot of disappointment in brothers uh, and black women in America. But we're very forgiving individuals, right. uh, gentlemen. And uh, I don't think we've done anything worse or than any other group of men on this planet. We haven't uh, waged war or did anything uh, 
uh, the other leaders and other nations on this planet. So I'm, I'm pretty sure that we can be forgiven for the minor mishaps that we might have lacked in in different areas, you know, uh, that we could probably use, you know, to improve in. But forgive, forgive, forgive us, and we'll forgive you, and we can heal this whole, uh, whole thing. And every black man on the planet was birthed by a black woman. I family, appreciate the energy on that one. And so, um, family, what we want you to do so you can find out more about what we do is uh, visit our website, africaforthafricans.org. We're experiencing our 10 year anniversary. We have plenty of uh, journeys to the motherland, a lot of fresh new itineraries. And uh, we're looking to get you connected. And for those who are looking to this uh, bit of future, uh, we from America, uh, the African continent is perfect. We always push the country, Ghana. You see all the colors and everything. That's the energy we keep it flowing. With um, it's uh, it's you know somewhere where I spent a decade traveling to doing business and building relationships uh, with my brothers and sisters on the continent to make sure that uh, we have an ideal country where we can build from. And uh, Ghana always remind me of uh, it's like a Jamaica in Africa. It's, uh, <laughs> it's uh, perfect uh, elements and energy, and it's um, where people like myself is going to build my future. Um, you know, um, I, will, um, I will never, ever, 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 ever have another child in America. I will never put myself in a situation where I'm committed to getting married in America or anything like that. Um, I just believe that um, someone like myself, I'm 39 years old, I've spent enough time in this country. Uh, I've spent about 27, 28 years in this country, um, 11 in Jamaica. And it's just really time for, for people like myself to just really just be a part of the Exodus plan and really just start making it more things go. So that's why we're pushing the, the repatriation village in Ghana. Um, it's uh, it's a foundation that's going to represent you know, what the, our ancestors guarded and many of our other great visionaries who believe that we as a people need to build our future away from here and we need to get away from all the things that's mixing us up and causing this lack of uh, progress. So family, until next time, uh, we'll keep it strong and um, in the strong black fist family. Let's build, not destroy. We'll keep building. Black love. Black love. Black love. Black love.